as we are told, that the mind of God apprehends and knows all things. One may hope that it is not irreverent to imagine what was in the mind of Christ when he entered Jerusalem on the first Palm Sunday. The writer of Matthew's Gospels almost invites us to indulge in that speculation. The first thing we can infer is that Jesus had arranged the parade through the streets of Jerusalem before he even reached it. It was not a spontaneous event, but one might say one that was even stage managed deliberately by him. There seems to have been a network of friends in and around Jerusalem, known to him, but unknown, it seems, to his disciples, upon whom he could rely, perhaps like Nicodemus. They were followers who could not openly declare themselves. He had made arrangements with one of them to ride on a donkey and her colt into the city from Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Just as four days later, he would make carefully anticipated arrangements to celebrate the Passover with his closest followers, with someone who had rooms, space and servants in the overcrowded city, although we are not told who that person was. And if we consider this, we may think him riding in triumph through the streets of Jerusalem, accepting the triumphant plaudits of the crowd as the son of David and one who comes in the name of the Lord, is not that characteristic of the Jesus whose ministry we have traced in the Gospels to this point. Yes, he has spoken and healed as one with authority. But I, for one, always sense in many Gospel accounts that Jesus did not always welcome extended contact with his followers. He tries to escape the attention of the crowd. He notices immediately if somebody touches him. He goes up a mountain to pray and be alone. He urges his disciples not to reveal that he is the Messiah or his predictions of his own death and resurrection and asks on many occasions those whom he has healed not to announce his healing abroad. All this changes once he comes near to Jerusalem. He accepts the cries of the crowd acclaiming him as Messiah, and he acts out the age-old prophecy of Zechariah as to the manner of his triumphant entry, as seated on a donkey and her colt, and arranging for those animals to be available in advance. And the people of Jerusalem, steeped in the oral tradition of the scriptures, would no doubt have immediately spotted the illusion. Indeed, on that day, only five days before Good Friday, the crowds rejoiced in it. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And after Palm Sunday, Jesus' exchanges with the, his enemies become more openly bitter and even more confrontational. He insults them and threatens the existence of the temple and the whole hierarchy of the Jewish religion. They are almost forced by their opponent to make the traitorous rest in the Garden of Gethsemane and the shabby condemnation to judgment on Good Friday. Why this change in his presentation of himself, this almost going public of Jesus, that the procession of the first Palm Sunday heralds. Let us not forget the many ways in which the authorities of the Roman Empire, in common with so many other dictatorships, could operate against those whom it found convenient to cause to disappear. The imprisonment, like the Baptist, in prison for long periods of time so that people might forget him, or the sudden thrust of a knife in a dark alleyway and the tip of a dead body into a convenient well or system. The kind of fate plotted by his enemies from which St Paul was constantly trying to escape. For Jesus knew, as he had told his disciples, that his enemies were plotting his death. 
and for that death to have its universal meaning for the redemption of the sins of the whole world. He had to make it that of a public figure and take place in a public way which could not be forgotten. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? Cleopas, on the road to Emmaus, asks his mysterious companion. Jesus could not die in a hole in a corner kind of way. Unnoticed in obscurity, wretchedly and conveniently, so that the volatile crowds of Jerusalem were not agitated. His enemies were forced, therefore, by his divine cunning to justify their actions in relation to a newly acclaimed celebrity by following a public judicial process. As St Peter reminded them at the first Pentecost, this man handed over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. And so, as we say in the Apostles' Creed, we believe that he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. An historical and remembered fact in time, but which stands outside time for us men and for our salvation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.